Welcome, Welcome Cornerstone, Cornerstone families. families! We are so pumped to have you joining us online today. In today's video, we're going to have a time of worship as well as a Bible story for you guys to watch. And afterwards, you can check out our Cornerstone Kids Facebook page to find the parent guides for today's lesson. Make sure you gather as a family and go through those activities and questions together. Yeah, now let's hop into worship. me from the start you're the one who knows my heart you are there for me jesus you are showing me the way love and kindness every day you are helping me jesus so i'll find Hey everybody, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of someone who had to lose his sight to see. Hey, I got your glasses. Oh, thanks, man. You're very welcome. You have a great trip. Thank you. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith. Which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Are you ready to move? Well, I want to see what's in the box. Me too. You mean you don't know? Not a clue. Wait. What? Mysterious box? No label? It's a scary movie waiting to happen. You're right. Let's take precautions. OK, you ready? On the count of 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Zeke, 11. Hmm? Nothing. Oh, wait, there's a flashlight. And not a very good one. Hold on. This isn't just any flashlight. It's a black light. Like what they use at crime scenes? Oh, it can be used for lots of stuff. Well, how does it work? 
A black light gives off ultraviolet light that is invisible to humans. Certain fluorescent substances absorb the ultraviolet light and re-emit it at a different wavelength, making the light visible and the material appear to glow. Cool. I wonder what we can see with this. You were in a white shirt. Watch this. Lights. Wow. Whoa. Dude, look at your shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, your teeth looks ridiculous. Uh, it's like I'm radioactive. What else can we see? Whoa, glowing fruit. That is totally awesome. Ripe bananas get fluorescent so that they can attract animals like fruit bats that don't see the normal range of light. Ah, God must have a wild imagination to come up with that. Hey, there's a note in there. It's blank. You really think so? Ah, lights! Find six letters around the lab and you will get a prize that's fab. So we're supposed to search the whole lab with the black light? Sounds like it. Well, what are we looking for? Not sure. Let's start over here. Falling right behind you. I see you. Just make sure you have my back. Oh, look! Ooh, it's a P! Wow. Let's keep going. Okay. Oh, it's a three! But that's a number? I think it counts, right? As numbers do. Let's keep going. Okay, so we have a P and a three. Oh, look, look, look! Ooh, ooh. An L! The plot thickens. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we gotta find some more. Ooh, right behind you. We gotta find some more, Zeke. Oh, look, 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 look. X marks the spot, huh? Arg, matey. <laughs> okay, so we've got three. P. L. X. Okay, two more. Right, that's four. I'm kinda scared, Zeke. Don't be, I'm right here. Oh, 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 here's oh. an A. Oh, scared me. Okay. Okay, one more. One more. What have we got so far? Uh, uh, three, P, L, X, X A. A. One more. One more. Where is it? You find it. No, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't. You, you haven't found one yet. Oh, okay. Is it on the ground? No, 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 is it on the ceiling? No. Ooh, you're moving too fast. Oh, sorry, 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 where are you? Oh, there it is! Oh, oh, oh. The C. Okay, okay, so that's that's uh that's six. Right. What do we got? We're done, we're done. Okay. Uh, three. Uh, uh P. L. Uh A. X. Uh C. That's all of them. Three. I, I said that! We're done! We're done! Finally! Uh, lights! Okay, that was six. What have we got? Uh the three L exact. What if we rearrange the letters? Nope. Nope. Oh, C-3PO. You know. Sir, the possibility of us successfully navigating the asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. There's no O. <sighs> oh, wait, wait, let's see what it looks like with the 3 and the X put together. Wait, I got it. Oh, God, clap three times. So we're supposed to clap three times? You can do the honors. A gift! What could be inside? I have no idea. You, you know, open it. No, you open it. Uh, no, you open it. No, I don't open it. I, me neither. No, you! Okay. You ready? Yes. Ooh. Glow sticks. I know just what to do with these. Oh! Zeke. Yeah. Zeke. Yeah, son. I'm tired. Yeah, me too. Oh, that was a blast. I feel like I've gotten to see the whole world in a new light today. And we're just getting started. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. 
Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly with the help of God's Spirit. When the believers faced trouble in Jerusalem, they scattered to other places, taking the news of Jesus everywhere they went. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Today, I want to introduce you to a man named Saul. Now, if there was such a thing as a model Pharisee or Jewish religious leader, Saul was it. Saul, also known as Paul, was born as a Roman citizen which gave him special privileges. Growing up, he studied the scriptures until he knew them inside and out. As the early church grew, Saul was just as upset as the other religious leaders. When a Jesus follower named Stephen was sentenced to die, Saul stood by in approval and actually held the coats of the men who threw stones at Stephen. Saul was absolutely certain that Jesus' followers were a threat and that the best way to please God was to get rid of them. He began going house to house, dragging believers off to prison. And when the new believers scattered to other towns, Saul wanted to follow. He took his plan to the high priest. Give me letters to the synagogue in Damascus. Then I can go and hunt down men and women who belong to the way of Jesus. We'll arrest them and bring them back here to Jerusalem. Fantastic idea. Consider it done. With the approval of the high priest, Saul gathered a group of men and supplies for the journey. Now, Damascus, which was the capital of Syria, is around 150 miles from Jerusalem, so that would have taken nearly two weeks to travel on foot. But Saul hated the followers of Jesus so much that he couldn't wait to get on with it. After long days of travel, Saul's group finally neared the city of Damascus. The noonday sun shone down bright and hot, but Saul charged ahead, eager to carry out his plan. We'll find them all. We'll stamp out this dangerous Jesus nonsense. Then, something happened. Something that would change Saul's life in an instant. A brilliant light flared from heaven. So bright the sun seemed dim. A voice spoke from the light. Saul, Saul. Why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I'm the one you are opposing. Okay, now imagine for a moment that you're Saul. You thought Jesus was just a troublemaker who was killed, dead and gone. Yet now he's alive, speaking to you from a blaze of light. It's like your whole world tips upside down in an instant. Ah! <laughs> Whew! And Jesus wasn't done yet with what he had to say to Saul. <laughs> now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul saw the light too and heard a sound. What is that? It's like thunder. As the light faded, Saul stood and opened his eyes. I, I can't see. Saul had been in full command, yet now he was helpless. Men from the group led him to a home in Damascus, and for three days, still blind, Saul prayed to God. During this time, he didn't even eat or drink anything. And that's where we'll leave it for today. The end. Ooh, a cliffhanger. <laughs> You're right, it's to be continued. You cannot just leave everyone hanging like this. <sighs> okay, spoiler alert, Saul's meeting with Jesus did change him. Later, Saul regained his sight, and instead of trying to wipe out Jesus' followers, Saul became one. So what's our part in the story? Well, you probably won't hear Jesus ever speak to you from a brilliant light. Saul's perspective, his way of seeing the world, was changed in an instant. But as you begin to learn who Jesus is and choose to follow him, your vision too will start to shift. You'll start to see things in a new light. Like the stuff that happens to you. That's true. When you know Jesus, you discover that you are a child of God and that God loves you more than you can imagine. Everything that happens to you, even the hard stuff, becomes an opportunity to grow and become more like Jesus. 
Knowing Jesus can change how you see other people too. Yeah, it's like you get this supervision to look at your class bully or your annoying little cousin and see that they're made in God's image too. And they deserve your love and respect. Knowing Jesus means that you can pause at any moment in your day and ask Jesus to give you his perspective. The more you do, the more Jesus will show you ways to love God and love people in everything you do. Yep, I think you guys are seeing the light. See you next time. So here's the thing. Knowing Jesus changes how you see things. Hey, do you think those glow sticks have any light left? And thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time.